Welcome back, Brooklyn. Tis the season for more love and more joy, giving us the perfect way to introduce today's guest, Ayo, which actually means joy in the African language of Yoruba. Singer, songwriter, and world music artist Ayo gifts us with the layered sound, which, although it actually draws from a range of her emotions, including the tumultuous lows and exuberant highs of the world, is sure to fill the studio with something we all can be joyful about tonight. I am your host, Queen God Is, encouraging you to get comfy and cozy for a special heartwarming, soul-soothing, good vibes ride on B-Side. Keep it close. That are shaped like stars and little cupids aiming straight for our hearts. From a pew to what looks beautiful is this planet Mars. I guess it really doesn't matter. Who cares? Whatever. Whenever you and I, I mean, we are together. You make me feel so good. You make me feel much better. Rainy days, sunny days, no matter the weather, like the tattoo on your chest, I will stay with you forever. All I want is you. Oh, I adore you. Yes, I do. Yeah, I got so much love for you. I know what I feel is true. All I want is you, you. Oh, I adore you, yes I do, I do. Yeah, I got so much love for you, for you. I know what I feel is true, it's true, true. You can pierce a hole in a coat lid, stick it on my finger, just like those stretch marks. My love for you would linger like Saturday Night Live in Jerry Springer. Like every great rock band had a front singer, like Susie's fast car on my appendix scar. A Fender, a Gibson, a Martin guitar, like expensive organic food and people being rude. I will always love, I, I will love you until the world stops to turn. I, I will love you until fire stops to burn. I will love you. Till the heavens break up on I will love you Forever and beyond I will love you Until the world stops to turn I will love you Until fire stops to burn I will love you Until the heavens break up on I will love you Forever and beyond Thank you. 
This is December 2017. I just want to give a quick acknowledgement that this is the last B-side for the year. So audience, give it up for yourselves one more time. Woo! And what a beautiful way to wrap up this year than with a beautiful Thank and you. brilliant artist to kind of just, we have this unplugged vibe, like we very mm -hmm. intimate experience. Um, Io, uh, you, there's so many things to say about you. Before I go deep into it, I would love for you to introduce this awesome musician that is playing with you tonight. Jermaine Parrish. Give it up for Jermaine. Jermaine. And for those born who and don't, raised in Brooklyn. All the way from Brooklyn, would you say all the way born from Brooklyn? Born and raised in Brooklyn. Oh, born and raised in <laughs> yeah. Brooklyn, yes, perfect. And for those who don't know what he's playing, this uh, percussive instrument is called? A cajon. Cajon. Cajon, got it. Really warm and beautiful sound. Let Thank us get you. into it. So you are a singer, a songwriter, a musician, a dancer, I would dare say, a <laughs> world traveler, an actress, which a lot of people may not know, and you are also a multi-platinum selling artist and a mother. Yes, a mother of three. A, a mother of three. <laughs> yes. In a world where so many artists and musicians try to, in some ways, downplay their personal life or their family relationships um, just so that maybe we can focus on other things or this idea of what a superstar is supposed to be someone who's free from certain types of connections um, and responsibilities family and motherhood is a big part so I want to start with this because yes. it family is a big part of how you created your first song at 15 years old and every album has a pretty much has a connection to a member of your family. Yes. Let's that's talk very about true. family is to you um, and how it has been a, a foundation for your work. Family to me is, I would say, is like the country where you're from. I don't really believe in being from a certain place. Mm -hmm. Like I cannot say I'm from Nigeria or I am from Germany or I am from Romania or I, I'm so mixed that I never really knew mm -hmm. where I was from. Really, I couldn't name one country, but I can say. I'm from my mother and my dad. Mm -hmm. Like that's my that's my family. That's my roots. Those are the people who gave me um, my knowledge and, and you know my the, the vision that I have and, and you know the the way I look at the world. Right. Is family is you can consider yourself blessed. You know when you have one. And when I think about people who don't have a family, um, you know it's it's. It, makes me sometimes when I think about it, it makes me sad but at the same time I can say that family as well can be just the people you you love dearly and your friends you know at, at a certain age you you make your own family you create your own family you know and in many ways music becomes a familial source for a lot of people when they listen to different artists they feel a sense of home or a sense of connection and I know your music has done that for a lot of people in a case in point one of the producers earlier was had a, mm -hmm. a connection with your music and and sometimes these family connections that we're making as listeners and lovers of music the artists will never know mm -hmm. um, your father is Nigerian exactly. your mother is Romanian you grew up she actually is a Roma she's a Roma yeah, Can you which explain is that first? you know a lot of people even on the internet they always get it wrong they all say my mother is Romanian but my mother was born in Germany but she's a gypsy oh. gypsies don't have a country they, they, you know, it's almost like I would always give the example, like when you say you have the Jewish people, right. you know, the 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 Jewish people. It's not just a, it's of course it's a religion, mm -hmm. but it's it's um it's it's a it's like a almost like maybe tribal, you know, yes. in a way. It's mm -hmm. you know, and and gypsies, you have the Sintis, yeah. and you have um, Romas, you know, and. Okay. And Romas are the, the gypsies that mm -hmm. you will find in Eastern mm -hmm. uh, Europe, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm glad that you actually brought this up because this brings up a lot of different points. And one, the first point being that music becomes a world history lesson for a lot of people who may not have been introduced to a lot of concepts. People learn languages from music, people learn uh, world histories from music, like I said, about different cultures. Specifically about the word gypsy. Um, it has been brought to my attention multiple times, and I've heard that, that that word in many ways is considered a derogatory word, but yes. you're self-identifying as, you know, by way of your lineage. Can you explain us a little bit more about that word so that we can wrap our minds around the layers of that word and how um, your mom even may have accepted mm -hmm. that word for her? So. I mean, you know, I think basically it's like, you know, if you think about it, the correct, the correct term would be Romani people, you know, right. to say uh, my mother is is, is a, a Roma, a uh, woman, you know. Um, essentially a nomad. Yeah, exactly, okay. a nomad, exactly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, it, it so happens that um, it, 
the, the term gypsy became like, you know, there's a lot of people who feel like offended mm -hmm. um, when you use that, that word. But at the same time, me personally, I don't feel offended mm -hmm. when, because, you know, to me, um, the, I find beauty even in it. I don't, mm -hmm. I think everything depends on how you look at, sure. at something, you sure. know? Like what you make out of it, if you only see, like if you look at it from a negative point of view and you you, you want it to be negative, right. then of course you can right. feel offended. And this offended. is kind of coming on the heels of a legacy or, or many traditions of people um, reclaiming terms and finding source points of endearment. I mean, this has happened with many words in our, and it's complicated. So it's some complicated. people can use it. <laughs> and then, then we it's just probably think about other our people color, you know, cannot. Already. Um, but so the term w was referring to uh, thievery or, or these people who were yes. nomads traveling or trying to sustain themselves without a traditional sense of home, having to make a, li a living for themselves. Yes, but you know, it's interesting what you're saying because the, that's a problem is that it's not the word itself. It's that the problem is that people think this is what gypsies are because in, in their heads, it's like you say gypsy, they think of, of like the family that is on the sidewalk, I'm um, asking for money and up to no good, poor, trouble stealing, and, yeah. poor. Mm -hmm. But you know, you have gypsies that are that, that settled down. You know, like right. in Germany, as an example, like I remember in Hamburg, like my, my first band that I ever had, they were uh, uh, they were Sintis, so it, it, they were they were gypsies as well. And okay. and and they, but they were settled down and they live in this. It's almost like a village, and there's only Sintis living there. They have their own church. They're all like, it's a clan, you know? Okay. Their name is uh, Family White. Okay. In, in German, it's Weiss, but it's, you know, in English, you, if you translate it, it's, it's white, okay. white. And they all live there, and there's so many houses, beautiful houses, and, and it's this huge community, you know? So a, okay. a lot of people don't know that. Yes. They, they so, just so we started with one song, which was called All I Want, and we ended uh, in this beautiful rabbit hole of uh, social, political, <laughs> cultural uh, yeah. conversation. And I think that that's a beautiful way to kind of go into your set today because there's so it's so smooth and simple in some ways but it has a lot of layers to it but the bottom line is we're going to come back to a place of joy give it up for io we're going to go into the next song which is a hit single from her newest album called the album is called io and this song is called panem yes Jack of hearts, it's written in the stars. We'll never be apart. Akure, Akra, Wagadugu. I'm telling you, the God knows truth. Whenever I go someplace new, I can't tell but think of you. Panam, Panam, mon coeur est à Panam, mais je suis mon âme comme une vraie gitane. From Leal to Pella Shesano, every part of you, your worst, your best. And how could I forget sunset at Butchumon and crashing at my best friend's place at Rue Eiffel? I'll always remember La Santa La Bastille, where for the very first time people were listening to me. Never forget the love and blessings I receive. That's why I could never uh, turn my back on you and leave. Panam, Panam, mon coeur est à Panam, mais je suis mon âme comme une vraie gitane. Panam, Panam, mon coeur est à Panam, mais je suis mon âme, je suis une vraie gitane. 
Je suis une vraie gitane. Panam, 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 panam. Mon cœur est à panam, mais je suis mon âme comme une vraie gitane. Panam, panam, mon cœur est à panam, mais je suis mon âme comme une vraie gitane. self-proclaimed <laughs> descendant of gypsies we have io a world music artist literally a world music artist that you've been so many places collecting pieces of your sound and a sense of home in the music and in the family that you've grown um, since you started this song is called panam which is an ode to paris but yes. specifically the uh, african and jamaican communities that you've discovered there the, um, african jamaican and as well the you know that you, you know panam the meaning of panam okay. actually the gypsies call paris panam okay so and this you, is a, okay got you it you know and, and paris basically is like i would almost say like capital to the gypsies you know yeah. paris is a is a city Why where is that? there's um, this is actually a good question. Why? I mean, it has always been like al already in the twenties. Mm -hmm. So many gypsies came mm -hmm. to Paris, and and you know they they used to play music, and you you have like um, in in French they say manouche, the, you know the, like the manouche uh, people, which is another it's it's another term for gypsies as well, manouche music, okay. and you know and and it's it's very it, rich in culture, and yes. and you have so many places there where they play. I don't know if you heard of like as an example Django Reinhardt, you know, like who was like one of the most famous gypsy uh, musicians ever, a guitarist who could play the guitar with only I think he had three fingers on one hand and wow. like actually on 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 this hand and, and you know he played the guitar like nobody else mm -hmm. and it's you know you you find like incredible musicians in Paris who actually when you ask them where they're from they will they will be like oh I'm a Roma oh I'm a Sinti you know yes. you will. It's I mean, y'all thought y'all came just for a concert. Y'all need to get your <laughs> notebooks and pens out. We thought we was ending the, end, ending the year on a lighter note, but this is actually, this is great. This is layered. Um, you said that you got your musical wings in Paris. So uh, obviously it has been a home, not just for all these other music, a crossroads for these other musicians, um, but you started to really discover your sound. But you wrote yeah. your first song at 15 years old. Yes. Where were you when you were 15? When I was 15 years old, I just returned from um, foster care yeah. back to my father. Mm -hmm. And I was in, in a little place, in a little village called Zevelin, <laughs> which is like a place where you have, um, at that time, where you had a lot of racism still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, where is Zevelin? Zevelin is like, it's close to, it's, it's more like, North uh, West Germany, like, okay. the, or you could say center, but it's okay. it's called North Rhine Westfalen in German. Yeah. It's it's difficult to <laughs> to say this in uh, in English, okay. but it's a part of Germany that it's not too far from Cologne. Yeah, so Cologne you were in a is very close to Paris in this area, yeah. and specifically this moment coming out of foster care mm. because of again your mom a situation with your mom which many people would yeah. find like uh, extremely private uh, and intimidating to share um, in fact your, your dad was it was he wanted to be discreet about this particular topic yes. but you shed light on this particular topic I would love for you to share it with the audience mm. what was the situation growing up with your mom that led you to that song that eventually led you to your career um, you know my mother to me I always looked at her like uh, a queen you know I, I, I remember my first um, you know, idol, I would almost say, it was my mom. And, you know, she was a very powerful woman, uh, very interesting character. But unfortunately, when I was five, she became a heroin addict. And I believe that she, you know, you know, I, when, when I was little, it was, it was, I didn't understand what was happening to her. I just saw a lot of things that I wasn't supposed to see. And I knew um, it was wrong, you know, I knew something was wrong. But I loved her and I wanted to be there with her and with my father. I didn't want to be in foster care or anywhere, you know, but, yeah. but at that time, um, you know, it so happened that it was, it was very difficult and because she couldn't really take care of us, 
My father was um, self-employed um, and he wanted to take care of four kids all by himself. My biggest brother, my, my eldest brother, he's actually, um, he's white and my dad adopted him from my mother's mm. first um, uh, marriage, you know, and, and so my father was left alone with him and with my other three siblings and um, other two siblings, all of us together, four, I'm the youngest out of four. And so I'm um, in Germany at that time, they didn't believe that my father was able to take care of his four children, which also had to do with the fact that he was a black man mm. in Germany and we have experienced a lot of racism. And it's funny because many times, like when I talk about this in Germany in particular, you know, um, about this story, I always felt like I almost didn't feel comfortable to talk about it because I felt like a lot of people, they would be like, oh, you know, it, it's not what you think it is and all this. But I know it, it's what it was yeah. because I was there, I experienced it. Yeah. And my dad tried his best, but, um, you know, he, he took us to, um, actually, his, he, he tried to find a, um, a foster family for us, you know, yeah. which we we went to as well after foster care. We went to foster care from there back home because, you know, we we couldn't stay there. We were very unhappy. Then we went to foster family. They were very bad people. Mm -hmm. From there, we went back to to foster to that same foster. So your dad care. actually tried to have a hand in identifying the family for you all to stay with. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I don't know how it. I, I don't think that that's quite how it works here. And but I do know. Foster care is a universally challenging situation in Very. a lot of ways. A lot of young people come out of it obviously bruised in so many ways. Mm -hmm. For better or for worse, some are able to, to persevere and transform it. You were one of those. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the, the rightful anger that can come out of an experience like that, especially towards the parents before whatever they may or may not have been able to do, didn't seem to quite mm -hmm. color your yeah. this particular song that we're talking about which kind of you know springboarded into your career yeah. tell us about the 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 song that you wrote like what were the lyrics how did you address your mom how did you honor her how did you challenge her what were the emotions that came up in that particular song um it's interesting because you know this like my very first record was basically the whole record was about my my childhood you know mm -hmm. and it was a way for me to self and this uh, record is called Joyful, therapy, yeah. which is, uh, you know, it's an interesting combination. Yeah. Of and concert. that song was actually not even on the record. There was a song called Joyful too, okay. but it's not on the record. Okay. And so we decided to just call it Joyful because, you know, the reason why I called it Joyful was because despite of all the pain, you know, sad moments in my life and my childhood, I was always a child of joy. I, I was always laughing and everybody who knows me, from for a long time they always say that oh my god you were always laughing and and I was living in a bubble too you know yeah. because I made up I was I would say when I was a kid I was lying a lot you know I mm -hmm. I just started believing my own lies and all this because that we was had my a way imagination oh yes <laughs> and Let's I think my kids that. have the same you know well, but I think this is a good <laughs> note to pause on this and go into the next song that you're always a child of joy no matter what which is not an easy thing and for those who are watching at home and those in the studio audience, there's a lot of pressure to always put a smile on our face or to pretend like something is be you know, better when it's not, as opposed to just kind of working yeah. through it. But what I can say is that music like yours, stories like yours, actually do help people begin the process of working through similar challenges and circumstances. And so that's a good segue to go into the next uh, song, oh, yeah. which life is not always these particular things, but um, let's <laughs> listen and see how she kind of helps put the rose-colored lens on an otherwise very challenging life. <laughs> this song is called Cupcakes and Candies. Give it up for Ayo one more time. <laughs> Cupcakes and candies, chocolate and jelly beans. 
but nothing tastes sweet. I love cupcakes and candies, chocolate and jelly beans, but nothing tastes as sweet as your kiss. Nothing tastes as sweet. Cheesecake Factory and Brooklyn's famous Ample Hills, ooey gooey ice cream. I love Jello and banana pudding, blueberry pancakes, French toast and marshmallows. I love Paris juice bar, green tea, chocolate chip cookies, London shortbread and Cadbury's. I love cupcakes and candies. Chocolate and jelly beans, but nothing tastes as sweet. I love cupcakes and candies, chocolate and jelly beans, but nothing tastes as sweet. I love cupcakes and candies, chocolate and jelly beans, but nothing tastes as sweet. I love cupcakes and candies, chocolate and jelly beans. But nothing tastes as sweet as your kids. Nothing tastes as sweet. Nothing. Nothing tastes as sweet as your kids. Thank you. <laughs> One of my favorite quotes of the year is actually, um, and I mean this humbly, something that I came up with <laughs> right before a performance I was doing. And I said, to make a list of all the things that you love and then build your whole world around it. And when we were talking before about some of the challenges growing up that kind of fueled your music, I was like, I was gonna ask you, well, what are some of the things that you did to kind of lift yourself up? And then I'm listening to this song, <laughs> not that we're promoting sugar, over sugar <laughs> consumption, you know, that's a little so dangerous, bad, especially right? during this season. <laughs> okay, let's get it straight. But I was listening, what was really beautiful is that, you know, you're very specific about the things that bring you joy so yeah. for those who are looking for a very modest resolution <laughs> the list of the things that you love you can throw in a couple of sugar <laughs> things if you have to um and then kind of go back to those in moments where you need it let's we are three songs in halfway through the show and we've heard probably about four or five different languages come out of your mouth <laughs> how many languages do you speak how many instruments do you play i speak three languages french german english um fluently but then i do speak a little bit of yoruba I understand more than I actually speak. Mm -hmm. I um, speak a little bit of Dutch too, but I understand pretty much everything because it's so yeah. close to mm -hmm. Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then I speak music. Yes, <laughs> yeah, y'all can give it up for that. Speak music. <laughs> Speaking of speaking music, how many instruments do you play? Uh, I play the piano, um, the guitar, the drums a little. I, I write on the drums a lot. Um, my first instrument was the violin, mm -hmm. which I would say I don't play it anymore, really. But I do play, you know, to me, instruments are like toys. I like picking them up and just, mm -hmm. you know, playing around with it. And I feel like you can get a sound out of any kind of instrument. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, you don't have to be like Jimi Hendrix on the guitar. You know, if you know how to play one chord, mm. one chord can be the greatest blessing. Because Some people would beg to differ. Maybe just kind of adjust the volume on that, depending on who's around you. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, which is a beautiful sentiment because there's so many things to discourage people, particularly young people, huh. from going for it, finding their voice, finding their instrument, putting it out there to the world. You don't sound like this person. You don't sound like that person you are not good enough. There's this idea of not being good enough that is pretty universal, unfortunately. Yeah. How did you find out that you were good enough? You know, that's a good question. 
very good question. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I think I have to say that my dad, okay. my father always wanted me to study. Yes. But I didn't want to go study. Yeah. I didn't want to go to university because I always thought I cannot study music. To me, I didn't feel like it's something that I could study because the way mm -hmm. music came to me mm -hmm. was on a total different level. You know, it was like a therapeutic way for me to express myself. And I felt like I cannot, nobody can teach me how to love. Like, yes, in a way you can, but, but you have your own way mm -hmm. to love and nobody can, nobody can tell you how to love, you know? Mm -hmm. You will find out the best way. You, you are you, and nobody can tell you, nobody can tell you and teach you how to be you. Mm -hmm. And music to me was the same way. And at one point, you know, I remember in the very beginning, you know, you have idols. You, like as an example, when you, you know, there were so many great artists like um, and, uh, Erica Badu, mm -hmm. Lauren Hill, um, India Irie, like those yeah. incredible, powerful women. Jill Scott, you know, one of them, like so many women that were so inspiring to me, Nina Simone. Sure. Mm -hmm. But then when you go through it, like there's a time when you're like 15, 16, I would say you try to sound like them, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you sing not from here, you sing here. Mm -hmm. You always sound a little nasal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, it's because you didn't discover your own voice yet. And as long as you sing songs of others, I feel like it's hard to kind of find your own voice, you know? Well, let's when take you a little start bit to deeper into that thought, though. So you said that your dad actually was an extra affirmation for you that you were good enough. Um, so we just have a quick technical note, is we want to turn up the volume on your guitar, just so that the audience can feel it more. That's so yes. OK. All right, so your dad, for those who may not remember, he is a Nigerian man. Mm -hmm. He was an engineer of yeah. some kind. And he was also kind of moonlighted as a DJ, which is yes. a very interesting, amazing combination. For my African friends, mm -hmm. you know, that is like almost like a Gemini split. Like on one yep. hand, the, Niger the traditional mm -hmm. Nigerian says, no, you will be doing doctor, lawyer, or something else, legit income producer, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. And then, but then, you know, Nigeria is rich with all of these other cultural influences and icons and singers, songwriters that, yes. you know, the world renowned. So it's amazing that did you experience both sides of your father in that yes. way and um, how did he arrive to the place of really just uh, affirming you you know my, my sister she became pregnant very early at an early age she was 19 when she had her first child and my father after that my father was very strict with me in a way because he didn't want for me to mm -hmm. you know yes. kind of go down the same uh, sure. road and and um not in a bad way but he just thought it wasn't the right thing for me but then he always he didn't know that i was singing actually you know that i was he thought he thought, you know, when I would come home, like, a little later, he thought, like, he was like, oh, she has a boyfriend or something. But I didn't have a boyfriend. I was really singing with a friend of I mine. I get it. So he was relieved. Yeah. He was like, you can do music as yes. long as it's not a boy. But when he heard my voice, it was then when I sang for him for the first time, because I was very shy. I didn't ever want to sing in front of my father. Wow. But when he heard my voice for the first time, that's when he said to me that he believes a lot my father. And he said that God yeah. had a different path for me, and he was sure that it wasn't the university. And he was so sure that he allowed you to actually to drop out. Yeah, and he told me to go. My father told me, you know, when I, when, I, when I dropped out of school, my dad always told me, go away as far as possible. When I, when I moved to London first, from London I went to Paris, I played in all these bars and all this, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, I jumped the metro and all this, you know, I couldn't afford a ticket and stuff like this. But my father told me when I called him and I said, Dad, I want to come back, because many times mm -hmm. I had doubts and I just wanted to return home. He said, you stay where you are. <laughs> That was your choice, and it's going to be hard, but you will succeed. Is your father still alive? Yes. And what's his name? His name is Taye, Julius Taye Obumaki. Yes. But they call him Tony. <laughs> Mr. Tony. <laughs> and As your a mom? DJ, it was DJ Tony. DJ Tony, <laughs> yes. And your mom? My mom's name is Lexi, but and her real name is Alexandra Barbara Baranowski. And they're both with us? Yes. I just want to give an acknowledgement to your parents for living their life and going through the ups and downs and that and then allowing you to live yours and encouraging you through the ups and downs yes. of that. We're going to go into Thank the next you. song um, because I want the audience to have a chance to digest all of this and to the parents <laughs> at home watching, you know, please find space in your life to give, to encourage your children to, to, to live theirs fully. Um, this next song <laughs> has uh, many misconceptions about the title. We want to remind you to turn up your guitar first of all, um, just before we go into that. and. 
I think it's the real, yes. <laughs> oh, so the pr producer agrees with me. I want to clarify this. A lot of people have mistaken this title, and I'm also kind of want to give a shout out to your dad, because when he realized it, what, that this title was actually not referring to um, what he thought you could have been doing, and he was relieved to find out that at, when you were coming home late at night, you were actually doing music. <laughs> this next song um, is called oh Boom my Boom. God. Of a different kind. <laughs> give it up for Ayo. <laughs> you are so funny. <laughs> You made it hard for me. <laughs> oh my God. intimate, lo-fi, unplugged version of Ayo, world music artist, but make no mistake, this is a very accomplished artist. She has five albums under her belt, which is huge for any artist. And you've also gone double platinum in France, you've gone platinum in Germany and Poland, gold in Switzerland, Italy, and Greece. 
And I think he just went diamond on B side right now. <laughs> that was definitely not the boom boom that people were mistaken it as. But let's jump into it. Let's talk about the the relationship of politics in your work, particularly, more specifically, brutality and the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, to me, I have to say, you know, when I when I wrote the song, um, I never forget. It was like around three years ago. I came home, I was in Brooklyn, and um, I came home and I turned on the TV, and all over the news was what, what just happened to Mike Brown. And um, they were interviewing a mother at a playground, and then they asked her what she would tell her, 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 her kids, in particular her two black sons. She said, I tell them whenever the police comes, when they're at the park, when they see police, they have to stop running they have to just stand still and be quiet and don't do too much. And basically, she said, y you, you know, you tell your kid to not be a kid. Just Wait, don't can you be. hold your thought really quickly? We want to do another technical adjustment because I want to make sure that, don't lose your thought, please. I want to make sure everybody can hear you clearly. Let's make sure that the guitar strap is not interfering with the mic. There we go. All right, cool. Um, apology for the interruption, That's but please okay. continue. So basically, you know that when I saw when I saw the mother talking about what she told her kids, it inspired me to write this song because I was thinking about I was thinking about Mike Brown's mother mm -hmm. and the mothers of all these victims and unfortunately okay. so many of them. Yeah. Back then when I wrote the song, I had no record label. I just left my record label. I was signed to Universal for ten years mm -hmm. and. Um, was an Interscope in the States and then I was a Motown and all this, always a major labels and I had the need to just leave and I wanted to quit music actually. Wow. That's why I came to Brooklyn. I thought mm -hmm. it was time for me to just be a mother, you know, and not play music and not tour and just be there for my two children at that time. The third one wasn't there. And when this happened, I, I, I just had to pick up my guitar and write about it. And it was crazy because I wanted I wanted to release this song. I wanted for the song to come out because I felt like people have to hear this. I felt like music should not be, you know, it's weird because we wait for such a long time before a record comes out. You collect the songs, then you go to the studio, record the songs, then you put it out. By the time you put it out, you're almost like, you, you know, it's, it's almost like too late, you know? You're already on a different kind mm -hmm. of, you know. Mm -hmm. I think music should be, in the moment, it's sure. a powerful tool. But specifically regarding themes of political issues, cultural, racial issues, injustice, these are themes that are pretty consistent yeah. uh, throughout time. So do you, did you ever feel like you had written a song about specifically the, a certain political issue or a certain um, cultural issue and you felt like it was outdated or are these songs kind of like? Unfortunately, that's that's what I wanted to say. Unfortunately, it wasn't. It wasn't mm -hmm. because ever since I wrote the song, mm -hmm. so much more has happened, exactly. happened, you know, and it's it's mm -hmm. so, almost scary. What's the response to this particular song and others like it since you've been performing it as yeah. of late? You know, I have to say that the response is always very very um, emotional, mm -hmm. and it's interesting because it's like. No, you know, you know how sometimes you can feel, like I said, when you, you can feel like uncomfortable when you talk about certain things because, you know, it's not like, you know, often I've been told as an example, oh, you know, but this is kind of like racism when you say this or that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how can I be racist? Mm -hmm. My mother is white and my mm -hmm. father is black. Mm -hmm. There are I people can, who find a way. <laughs> you know, and I, I, I feel but, like I can talk about yes, what's you, going you, on in both worlds. Right, you know, if I can right. be that messenger, you know, course, then maybe let, let me be that. But Has that been a difficult job? to be in between worlds that for most people are just, people live in, you know, these polarizing experiences, like one extreme or the other, but you have found, you know, a, a middle ground between both sides of your cultural heritage. That's what I wanted to say, thank you. If you don't know your place, the right place to be at is always truth. truth. Within truth, mm -hmm. you will find your place. If you don't, you know, I think it's more important these days to stand for something. Mm -hmm. If, if, you know, and I have to say this, the industry unfortunately is, is not designed, and I'm talking about the music industry, sure. they don't want for you to hear certain things. These are not the 60s and 70s anymore. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of people, they don't, they, they, you know, the fight is not, you know, Gil Scott Heron said, the revolution will not be televised. Mm -hmm. And that is a great And this note. is what we're living right and now. And also, we are live on television right now with Io singing and some of her revolutionary God. work. And so we want to actually acknowledge Gil Scott Heron for putting that notion out there and then giving us the fire that we needed to flip that yes. so that we can start to put more media attention yes. independently on these conversations. Yes. This is a great segue into the next song. Um, reminding the audience of your message is if you stand inside your truth, Stand inside your truth. You cannot go wrong. Yes. It's not easy. Yes. Nobody said it would be, but it's important and it's powerful. Give it up for Io. The next song is called Rebel. Thank you. I'm facing can't stop me now as long as I got you by my side Troubles I'm facing can't stop me now. For as long as I swim with faith, I cannot drown. They can take all the air out of my lungs, for sure they can. and sing my songs Cause I love like a rebel I ain't scared of the devil I love like a soldier I ain't scared to hold ya I love like a knight I'm ready to fight Love is my shield When I'm out in the field I love like a rebel I ain't scared of the devil I love like a soldier
2017 by Felicia. We are going into 2018 <laughs> loving like rebels, taming like rebels, feeding like rebels. I want to just kind of give you some more props. So you perform with Babyface. You perform for Jay-Z's uh, grandmother's 90th birthday party. You are a surfer. We heard this. I don't know how true it is, but if so, that's awesome. Yes, you are a patron of UNICEF, kind of an ambassador to education and the arts. Children, yeah. And most people won't know this. Uh, but you started out as an MC or a rapper. I would like for you to tell us quickly your top five MCs of all time. My top five MCs yes. of all time. Oh, and feel free to include one. yourself in this. Nas. Nas. Number one. Number two. Most Def. Number three. Jay Z. Number four. Biggie Small. Number five. Tupac. Yes. And if you could add a six non male to that list, who would it be? Non male? Yeah. Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill. I, I mean, I knew it was coming. I didn't know if y'all knew it was coming. Um, you know, I have to say, I do have to say that I, I you know, as an artist, um, I owe her so much because, mm -hmm. you know, when I grew up, and I think people have to really. You know, I, I give all the props to her because she is such an amazing, Absolutely. amazing woman and um, with so much talent. I think she's truly gifted, you know, and I think she always had a message and and you don't hear that lady curse too much and that's mm -hmm. what I love so much. Well, she had a command of vocabulary, yes. a command of language, a command of concepts. Yes. And I know for myself exactly where I was in 1996, 97 when that yeah. album was kept coming out and the miseducation of Lauryn Hill and blowing up and I know and I know the mo the parts of my spirit that that album and that she touched that she literally directly inspired in my exactly. art and my womanhood and nothing can ever erase that so powerful. and and I think that that's really beautiful that you acknowledge that in your words most oh. people kind of want to shy away from these influences oh you yeah, sound like no. oh you sound like but you, yeah. you know what thank you Yes. <laughs> this one is. You, I mean, I think nobody, you know, to me it's like when I listened, you know, I was so sad when Amy Winehouse passed mm -hmm. away. We were born the same day and I was actually Nas too. Born, I'm born uh, September 14th. Yeah. So, you know, they're all like yeah. uh, Virgos and Amy Winehouse to me uh, was in, an incredible artist as well. Mm -hmm. In, in many ways, I could tell that she was inspired by Lauryn Hill too. Yes. Because when you I think listen the list to is very voice, long. Yeah, so many people, yeah. you know, so many Almost artists, you know. So if, many artists. Can you leave us on two sentiments? Fill in these blanks really quickly. Joy is and Brooklyn is. And I think that'll be a good way to wrap the show. That's a good one. Joy is life, I would say. Because life is the most beautiful gift and enough reason to be full of joy, you know? We'll take it. You don't even have to explain it. And Brooklyn is? Brooklyn is joy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> AKA Brooklyn is life. Hey. Bam. Brooklyn Ooh. is life. Pow, you did it. Thank you so much. More, I want to just, uh, first of all, let's take, let's, let's digest that. Let's go into the new year with that. I think we did a good job on that. Uh, more than a voice, IO is a consciousness that inspires healing, unity, and of course, joy, joy, joy. <laughs> and isn't that what the season is all about? Thank you so much, Ayo. Thank, thank you both for sharing these priceless gifts with us now more than ever. Mm -hmm. We bid you the gift of our deepest gratitude and well wishes for your special journey ahead. It is indeed going to be special. That said, if you like the kind of gifts that keep on giving, check out this and past episodes of B-Side on youtube.com slash brick TV or our podcast at soundcloud.com slash B-Side podcast. Or you can just come on by the studio and experience this very lit giftuation live and direct. I am your host, Queen God is reminding you that whatever you celebrate or simply reflect upon, however you spend or invest your resources. Be safe, be mindful, 
be kind, and always be Brooklyn. Happy holidays. We love y'all. See you next year. Je te supplie, à genoux, je te supplie, à genoux, je te supplie. S'il te plaît, s'il te plaît, ne me quitte pas. À genoux, je te supplie, à genoux, je te supplie, à genoux, je te supplie. S'il te plaît, s'il te plaît, ne me quitte pas.
very much.